You know what they say, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Mercedes team boss Toto Wolf couldn't make it to the Japanese Grand Prix due to a surgery on the cruciate ligament, and the rest of the Silver Arrows took this as a golden opportunity to fall apart. Toto was likely to have some serious discussions with both his drivers and the team members responsible for their management. The scene in the Mercedes garage was already uneasy, as Lewis Hamilton and George Russell found themselves in close wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles on more than one occasion. The younger British driver attempted a pass at the final chicane, but Hamilton mounted a counter-attack, bouncing back from contact with Sergio Perez on the opening lap. In the initial part of the race, Russell made another move, trying to pass around the outside at Spoon, but Hamilton forced him off the track. Russell, boldly going for a one-stop strategy, got lucky and found himself ahead of Hamilton. He then suggested to the team that he should maintain his position ahead of Hamilton, who had fresher tires. Hamilton then warned his Mercedes team that if Russell didn't let him pass, they would likely lose both of their positions. But George was determined to have things go his way, even going as far as to beg for the team to grant his request. He said this over team radio in a pleading tone. Why don't we invert on the last lap, and he just stays in DRS like last week, unless he's fighting for a bigger result? Unfortunately for Russell, Toto Wolf wasn't having any of it. The Austrian had to step in and make it clear to the Mercedes strategists that they were to prioritize Hamilton over Russell. And just one lap later, Hamilton received reassurance from the team that they will swap positions. But it was obvious that Russell was reluctant to comply with the order. After passing his teammate, Sir Lewis was instructed to reduce his pace to make sure that Russell was within the DRS range, preventing him from becoming an easy target for signs on the straight sections of the track. Just a week before, Sainz pulled off this clever strategy himself, giving McLaren's Lando Norris a strategic advantage that effectively fended off a challenge from Mercedes themselves. Unfortunately for Mercedes, the strategy didn't pay off this time, and Sainz blew right past George in the next lap. Hamilton didn't like the tactic, believing that not being allowed to extend his lead and creating a big gap against Sainz was not the right course of action. After the race, he said, I don't think that was a good idea at all. When they suggested it to me, I knew that they had obviously thought of it from the last race, and it made no sense. I needed to get as far clear ahead as possible, and I was on my way. I was around two seconds ahead, and they asked me then to give George DRS, so I had to come off the gas down the straight to get him eight tenths of a second behind. He got DRS, but was overtaken, which was going to happen, because he was a one stop and we were on a two. Then he got past him, and he was right on my tail. So yeah, not ideal. It made it very hard for the last couple of laps, but I think as a team, we've got to be grateful for a 5th and a 7th. It's better than a 6th and 7th. Hamilton thinks that Mercedes could have managed the situation involving him and Russell more effectively, as both drivers ended up losing valuable time racing each other during a pivotal part of the race. We should have swapped around earlier, and I should have got as far ahead as possible to keep the gap as big as I could to the Ferrari. I think if we had inverted, maybe George would have had a better time holding him behind. Maybe. But because he was trying to fight me and damaging his tires, then I think it just made it all complicated. The fact is, we're not fighting each other in the team's championship, as the driver's is not important where we are. What's important is one of us finishes ahead of the Ferrari to keep the position. So today, we really needed to work as a team. Hamilton acknowledged that he had been a little pushy with his teammate, but didn't believe he had crossed any boundaries. He also mentioned that his performance had been somewhat affected by a collision with Sergio Perez on the way to the first corner, saying, I was definitely aggressive, but I think it was good racing. Honestly, I shouldn't really have been in that position, but I think I've picked up a little something on the right front, and it just kept snipping the front right at the last corner and turn 9 then it wouldn't turn through the hairpin. All weekend I've been good through here, but I was turning and nothing was happening. Definitely struggled on track with the balance, but it was a good battle, a little bit aggressive, but it was what was needed to get position. With George Russell having terrible weekends back to back, it could start taking a toll on his psychological state. And according to 9096 F1 world champion Damon Hill, Russell's error in Singapore is likely to be taken advantage of by some of his competitors as a potential vulnerability. 
Hill pointed out George Russell's mistake during Sky F1's practice coverage on Friday. He said that Russell would likely recognize that his mistake has been seen by his racing rivals, potentially giving them an additional advantage to exploit in future competitions. Hitting the wall? That's a mental scar. It has to be. He knows that those things are taken note of by other drivers. He knows that his teammate was right up behind him, pressuring him. He was right behind Lando. He was trying to make progress, and he made an error. It sounds like a very simple thing to do, but when you're that close behind the car in front of you, you can't see where you are on the track, so he'll remember that. It'll go in the memory bank, into the learning bank. He'll never do that again, hopefully. Karun Shandok agreed with Hill, adding that it's the kind of error that George Russell is likely to think about and reflect on for a good amount of time. I think it's helpful having another race straight away, because then you get your mind back on the job of actually driving. But he'll feel that pain for a long time, because that was a potential win. He was in the fight for the win. I'm not saying he would have gotten it, but he was in that fight. It wasn't an error like he was coming out of a corner and clouded an outside barrier. It was one of the things where your eyeline there is looking left to the apex, and he just got caught out with the way the wall juts in on the right. Knowing George, he will be annoyed with himself, angry with himself. Honestly, that'll live with him for a while. I honestly still think back to mistakes I made, 8, 10, 15 years ago in races, and think, I wish I'd done something quite differently there. So yeah, I don't think he'll forget that one. Despite the pundits suggesting that George Russell might be troubled by his mistake, the British driver dismissed these concerns during a media interview on Thursday. He asserted that he has already put the mistake behind him and moved on. It's been pretty good. It probably stayed with me for 24 hours. I think, in any moment of disappointment or failure, or whatever you want to call it, you need to take the positives away. I had a nice phone call from one of the chief engineers basically saying, George, the only reason we had a chance of victory this weekend was because of the amazing job you did all weekend. These things happen. We're pushing ourselves above and beyond. We went all in for the win. And sometimes, a street circuit bites when you make a mistake by one or two centimeters, so I'm not going to let it affect me. It's history, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. What do you think? Is George Russell really over it, or is he just trying to save face? And how will his mental state affect the entire Mercedes organization moving forward? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell for the hottest F1 news.